What's good? Today is Thursday, January 14, 2020. My name is Alex. I'm the intern at Corporate Cowboys Podcast. Yours truly, an Incorporating Associates production. <laughs> it's been um it's been a long week and it's only been 4 days. But I'm having fun. Um, I enjoy uh, being alive for one. So thank goodness for that. The fact that I'm able to get up out of my bed, though, with whatever fucking pains I might be in. Dude, I get up. I'm alive. I'm able to kiss my gun. Good morning. <laughs> no, nothing too extreme like that. Nothing crazy like that. Um, just wanted to, uh, uh, air, air a couple of ideas out here in order to, again, improve, uh, my mode of thinking, how I put things together logically, how I assemble them. And, um, there was a freaking term for that. How I assess and adjust my intonation, my intonations, how I pronounce, enunciate, all that good jazz. All of that good stuff that goes into having social skills and developing them into people skills. So I can, uh, so that I can stop saying uh and um and like. Because I want to be able to, on the first, on the one, on the first syllable that comes out of my mouth and is directed towards a person, I need to be, I, I need to be cracking safes, B. I, I need to be cracking safes on the first syllable. If I'm to be entering somebody's ear, somebody's eyes, you know, in a, in a visual or auditory or sensual even if i if i'm to be taking them along on a ride and yes it'll be a good ride it'll be righteous everything i do i hope is righteous i believe to be if not i'm convinced only through doing only through added experience such that everybody learns my being able to document it provides you with that additional experience from which I hope you learn. If you don't, fuck, you'll likely meet somebody like me in the future and, oh, you'll learn. <laughs> um, stop saying, um, I'm also going to attempt to vary up uh, the episodes in which I'm able to publish them, or I guess at the pace or in the sequence in which I publish them. Some of them will be uh, tailored to a specific topic. Others are just going to be to just straight up vent, rag, just bomb on people, um, bag on people. I'm sorry. I got to watch certain keywords until I'm more established than have a, an, an audience base where dropping higher keyed taboo words and topics aren't viewed so what is it displeased aren't viewed so displeasingly at aren't frowned down upon though i mean let's be real as a corporate cowboy it's in nobody's best interest to have you canceled why because I mean, it's best to have you where they can see you as a corporate cowboy. If, if you're working in an organization or with an organization, you feel me? Like as equals, you don't have to be under anybody for your whole life. You could be shoulder to shoulder as equals. And I mean, it's fun either way. I, I believe that it's fun. It's like waking up and going to work and, um, and putting in work, not just, not just what the boss wants you to do, but what you want to do inside of the company putting that shit to work. Anyways, another topic for another episode. I'm just racking up episode ideas, which I know I should be diving down deep into these rabbit holes. Why? Because it'll provide listeners with an hour of chalk 
like an hour, an hour with a chock full hour of just nonstop action. That's some fucking corporate cowboy shit. It's when you punching in, putting in eight, 10, 12 hours of just nonstop glory. That's what it is. It's glory. And it's, again, not what your manager wants. It's what you want. It's the glory you want to be doing. I get that there are some jobs that seem so menial, that seem like they're so dead and there is no room to do anything. But are you always at that job? Is it that mentally draining where after you're done punching out, you don't get, you don't get that little bit of energy to do something a little extra just for yourself? What do you do with that? Do you go home and burn a hole through your fucking brain watching fucking entertainment? Do you burn a hole in your brain with entertainment, with the distractions, with... <sighs> don't cuss. Relax. Don't, don't, don't get excited. Don't get aroused by my voice. And I'm talking like the, the, the arousal, the emotional arousements. Don't get emotional because of me. Don't, don't feel overstimulated, overwhelmed, because I'm telling you, your job could be fun. Your job is fun. Every job is a piece of cake. Any job, any, any job can be a piece of cake. My mind went straight to that. Quick story. Uh, while I was working in the Bay Area, I don't know, pick a coast. But I was working in the Bay Area and I had applied at the time. Oh, I was young, man. I was like 19, maybe 1920. And I applied for a position at a uh, very famous bank that started in the Bay Area. Uh, you might recognize them. They got like horses and chariots and shit on their logo. Horses and chariots, not shit on their logo. I'm sorry. They have horses and chariots on their logo. Or is it, is it chariots or wagon? It's a wagon. And I applied for a, oh, basic entry level position, teller. I applied for a teller position and I forget what the going rate was, what the wage was that I was applying for. I don't know how much money I'd be getting paid, what the compensation looked like. Um, I, I don't remember it now, but it being the Bay Area, I'm sure it was pretty decent. And because it's a bank, I mean, it's not like, a, it's not like a, it's not, it wasn't minimum wage. And I'm applying and I get selected for like the, pre, uh, the pre-interview orientation. Yeah, they had a bunch of steps to work for this bank. And uh, as they should, I mean, they want to be sure that they hire appropriate candidates. And so they want to have them properly vetted in order for them to get them in through the door and then, and then be able to orient them as employees for their company, for their organization. And uh, in doing so, I felt like I did okay. I mean, I, I got through the, the pre-interview orientation um, and then was, was uh, selected for an interview. So like a preliminary interview because this was going to be a, an, an interview series. And I, I think the last one might have been a panel interview. I never made it that far. Uh, and the panel interview is where you are seated, uh, maybe just yourself or maybe next to another individual who's also applying. I don't know, like if they want them to have these. I don't know if the panel of interviewers wants to have like more than one interviewee and maybe they sit them side by side and ask them both questions, kind of like in this gladiatorial interview in order to pick the best interviewee. <laughs> I never made it that far. I started with just uh, the first interview uh, where I went to like a regular branch. It was like, um, it, it was a slightly larger branch. So you could assume that they had uh, additional offices where people in like different departments, like additional departments that aren't gonna be like at the small branches. The smaller branches, typically you'd find what? Your tellers, uh, maybe a personal banker, uh, obviously the manager, assistant manager, you know, those, fools at the top, those people at the top, those individuals in management positions. And then uh, at these, at somewhat larger, uh, at somewhat larger branches, and this is, and this is, goes, this, this is the same for uh, a number of 
organizations, a number of companies where the smaller branches, the smaller uh, storefronts only have, you know, like limited services. And if you need like additional services, like fucking business or professional services, you go to a larger uh, branch where they might have additional offices with more specialized uh, individuals who are capable of handling um, special matters. So I went to one of these. I went to uh, to one of the slightly larger branches in order to interview with them. And uh, my interviewer, um, I'm not going to gender them. Though, I mean, having said that, in this day and age, you probably already know what gender they were. And they're interviewing me. And uh, yeah, like, I guess they were hosting this person because they came from, from uh, either a higher, either from a higher division, maybe like a regional division. And they came down in order to interview and they had, I'm sure they had a bunch of these interviews lined up back to back. So I might've just been one fool in a lineup, one idiot in a, one idiot, one applicant in a lineup with numerous applicants scheduled to interview for the day. Um, so interviewing, interviewing, we went through, uh, went through my cover letter, my resume. Um, well, they did beforehand, I'm sure. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been a good interviewer. And I suppose I can't ever tell if they're, you know, if they thoroughly read through one's cover letter or resume before interviewing. I mean, honestly, there are some really good interviewers out there who will gauge you uh, just in speaking with you, just in interviewing you, and they have the skill with which to do that with. They don't need something on paper that tells them what kind of person you are. They're able to gauge you uh, by looks, by what they hear, by what they feel. Uh, yeah, that's right. Even in a handshake, they can tell. <laughs> they exist. Believe me, they exist. Uh, but this uh, individual, this my interviewer, my interviewer, uh, we sat down across from each other at their little table, at their little office. I guess they, they cleared out, uh, again, at this particular branch because they have like additional offices for specialized um, matters. They, they cleared out, I guess, an office for them to occupy while they were there. Uh, <clears throat> Gotta stop saying, uh, take a breath. They managed to free up an office for them. And I don't know if this was actually what happened, but they managed to free up an office for them in order to occupy and conduct interviews for the duration of the time that they would be there. While they were there, they could use the office and interview. Yeah. And I could tell because the office wasn't decorated. It wasn't personalized. And walking in, it just looked like a very generic office. Um, I don't even remember if they had a computer. I think they were working off a laptop, which tells me, again, it's just a blanket. It's just a template office for somebody to come in and use in order to handle matters. And at a bank, typically it's banking stuff. But shit, at any other organization, at any with any other company, if you have just blank offices, yeah, you can use them for blank reasons <laughs> and in interviewing with them uh they went through my work history what i had done what kind of skills i possessed uh in handling cash it was a teller position i was applying for and whether or not i had experience handling cash handling people um, if i was sociable uh likable my references and um and uh, I believe they also went through through the standard. Where do you see yourself in five years? And this is, well, I've always been somewhat ambitious. And I recognize that work to me is nothing. Work to me is just, yeah, it's just a, it's just a standard shift. You go in, do your work and bounce. I, granted that, hold on, providing, providing that your work is good work you go in you do your job and you bounce so long as it's ethical so long as you're doing right by by yourself so long as you're doing right by your own self and doing right by the company doing right by the public i see no need to um, go further and uh 
where I saw myself in five years was the question. And I answered that I see myself getting promoted and moving up in a managerial into a position, into a leadership position. Um, and <laughs> I think, I think, no, I, I know now things probably started taking a turn when I, I asked them also some questions on like when they started at the organization and how they moved up. And I am doing so what I was doing is collecting information on what the hierarchy looked like at the bank and how I could move up from from day one. I hadn't even been hired. I hadn't even been hired. And I'm already looking for a way up. (laughs) Why? Because the work is easy. The work the work is a piece of cake. And when they told me or when they asked um, if I could, when they ask, better said, better said when they asked how, how well of a job they thought I could do or uh, how, um, how, how well did I believe I could do the job of a teller? They asked me, the question was, how well do you believe you can do this job as a teller? And I replied, (laughs) honestly, I think this job is a piece of cake. (laughs) Dude, when I tell you, when I tell you that she, I mean, she was, she was taken aback. You can tell that she tried to put on a poker face. (laughs) Fuck. I already, I, I. I revealed the gender too. You could tell that they tried to put on because I've always been a professional motherfucker, right? So, I, I mean, even even way back when, when I was young, it's always they, them, there for me. I don't give a fuck who you are or what you do. If I'm talking to somebody else about you, I'm talking about them. I'm I'm talking I'm talking to them about you using using the third using what is it? Gender neutral fucking non non-biased unbiased language that's what i'm using i'm using they them there always but in this instance yeah i mean it was it was a female who was interviewing me okay i'll give you that i fuck up from time to times um i mean and just speaking to friends yes we're friends fucking get over it i'm like the friend i'm like the friend you never had but i'm also your associate so don't get too fucking friendly um (laughs) yeah you could tell you could visibly you could tell that they were taken aback by the answer how they reacted after um i'm I'm forgetting now because this was quite some time ago i mean this was um geez when was this fucking 2013 2013 2014 and i was i was uh interviewing for them then and when I answered them, yeah, they were they they took a moment to pause and reflect on what I had just said, and I I gotta hand it to them. They they handled it. They continued the interview and then wrapped it up. Uh, not too long after, I think the interview lasted not more than five minutes after. So I they were looking for a way out. I believe they were looking for a way to end it in order to get me out the door. Why? Because they don't want, <laughs> my personal belief is that they don't want somebody too ambitious who's going to, who's going to make noise. They don't want somebody rocking the boat. They don't want somebody rocking the boat. And um, you get in and you're the one who starts asking questions, fucking commandeering the interview. Yeah. I mean, they're going to question themselves if you're a proper candidate or not. So I would appreciate it if I'm interviewing somebody and they start asking questions, they start asking me questions about my organization. I mean, again, I don't have to be the CEO for it to be my organization. I'm a representative like my interviewer was. They're a representative of the bank and it is their organization. So if someone started asking me, I'm interviewing a potential candidate to work for me or to work under me, right? Because they're still working with me, even if they're under me as my subordinate <laughs> or as somebody else's subordinate. And like this lady, I, I probably wouldn't, this, <laughs> this uh, my interviewer, I probably wouldn't have been working under her. I would not have been her subordinate. They're just hiring for the bank. C- 
creating subordinates. They're creating tellers. They're hiring tellers in order to bring on tellers for the bank. So if, if I'm hiring someone, if I'm the hiring manager, the, the human resource manager, and, and I'm interviewing somebody in order to consider them for a position, and they start asking me questions about my organization, that's a cause for concern. That's a cause for concern. One, because it's got to put you on alert. That shit's got to, that shit has half, must put you on your toes in thinking, who the fuck is this person? Who the fuck is this person to ask me about my organization, right? But, and I mean, in the same sentence, in the same spin of the coin, the same shot of dice, you have to be able to answer. Why? Because you have to be enthusiastic about your organization. If not, you're fucking food. You're food to that shark of an interviewee, to that applicant asking questions. If you fuck up, you're food. <laughs> and yeah, you're better off not hiring them. You're better off not hiring them. You want someone who won't ask questions, who won't, who won't rock the boat. So if I'm asking them how, if I'm asking them how long they've been with the organization, uh, what positions they've held, how long it took them to move up, hell yeah, I'm gauging my way up just by their answers. I need to know, and it's a fucking need to know basis. I'm trying to crack. I need to crack safes. I need to crack safes. Everybody is a safe. Everyone is a mental safe. Everyone has one mentally again and again, using logic, using tact, the way you present yourself again, because I didn't, I didn't walk in as a fucking scrub, like, Hey, I'm here to interview fucking. No, no. I went in looking professional, fucking professional. <laughs> Stop cussing. I went in suit and tie, right? Professional attire. And I sat down and I don't, I don't know if, if what, I'm sure I didn't look intimidating, but the questions though, <laughs> but the questions though, the questions had to have thrown them for a loop when they were not prepared to ride. And yo, it's their loss. Um, it's, it's their loss ultimately. Yeah, it's my loss too because I didn't get the job and I had some, that I had sincerely applied for uh, vying for a position with this bank as, as a candidate of theirs, uh, as an applicant in hopes that, I don't know, uh, in, in, in hopes to maybe not fulfill a career in banking, but get it in touch with the industry, tap into it and find out what it has to offer. That's all. That's all. D does that not sound like a, f a fulfilling career? What I'm doing is just getting in touch with the industry and I'm using this one particular bank, their representative who's interviewing me. I'm using, I'm using them as my way in, just like just like they'd be using me for for whatever labor I'm going to provide for whatever customer service which which my record is 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 top my record is aces for for customer service for dealing with people having those skills to be able to converse interact uh mitigate not uh stop saying uh to converse interact mitigate problem solve uh, fuck, stop saying, uh, dispute and conflict resolution, breaking cultural barriers. Those social skills, those people skills would have worked wonders for me as a teller. Well, I mean, fucking too little too late now, right? Because I'm not there. <laughs> I'm on the bigger fish and better fries Just like that. Sorry, I had to hydrate. Take a little drink. Take a drink of water. But today's day and age, there's so many tools that you can use in order to inform yourself on who you're going to be walking in and interviewing with. There really are. 
there are. Find out where this person is sitting in their organization, how high up the hierarchy they are, what rank they hold, their title, the kind of respect. Maybe you could even go as far as finding out the reputation if you're up to do the legwork. And it's all possible. It's all possible in today's day and age. Everything is just an arm's length away at your fucking fingertips. A little work, a little work from the mouthpiece, get any information you want. Possibly even an email. Though, if you leave a record, if you leave a record, then that record can come back to you, right? Anything you leave on paper, any electronic or digital footprint, any record can come back to you. Besides, in person. And in person is where I believe you may, you can make the most impact and uh, not have it reflect poorly on you as a professional, as a corporate cowboy. It's what you want to do. You want to handle business in person, up close and personal. <laughs> but hey, everything is uh, getting more and more digitized. Technology has been a bounty not just in terms of information, but in operation, how to go about handling business. Today's sponsor for the show, I forgot what the sponsor was gonna be, damn. Probably gonna be, uh, probably gonna be cake. It's not, it's not healthy to eat every day, right? But. I mean, it's not healthy to have just straight meals out of it. I know there was a famous person who once said, let them eat cake because it's not the most expensive. It's not the most nutritious. I mean, I'm sure you can find a way to source the ingredients where it becomes a higher level of, um, it requires a higher level of appreciation in order, in order to, um, fully yeah it just requires a it requires a higher level of appreciation and uh, provides satisfaction and fulfillment by consuming a luxury man that's got to be that, that's got to feel lovely i've had some pretty expensive pieces of cake in my lifetime but they can't ever be expensive enough right <laughs> oh man Oh, I just came up with a title for this one. Oh, you guys will see it. You'll love it. And and uh, when <laughs> when you hear about it, when you when you read it, and when you get to this point, you'll see why. <clears throat> um. So yeah, today's sponsor is is Cake. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I am, I am your sponsor, yours truly, Alex. Uh, the time and energy, stop saying, uh, the time and energy that goes into creating this material, this content, really, it's just to help me, mind you, okay? Mind you, this is therapy for me. I can voice my uh, thoughts. They might not even be my own opinions. Uh, these are just thoughts that go, uh, that go through my head and uh, come out in discussion and conversation with other associates and having the cleanest record or one of the cleanest records has its benefit. I'm able to put my voice out there and potentially my face for the organization for incorporating associates. But that's uh, some time down the line in the future. That's some time down the line. That's some time in the future down the line. That's some point down the line That'll be at some point down the line. <laughs> um, yeah, you can follow us on Instagram. Uh, if you still fuck around with social media, uh, personally or professionally, follow us on Instagram. That's incorporating.associates underscore IA. On Patreon, you can find us. Um, that would be Corporate Cowboys Podcast. Anywhere that podcasts play, that's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and the Play Store. 
on Spotify, I believe. Yes, Spotify, uh, Anchor even. Uh, there are some more, some other smaller, maybe smaller or obscure uh, podcast sites that folks like to listen in from. And yeah, you can find us there. If you want to shoot us a little donation, if you want to place your bets, <laughs> place your bets on a corporate cowboy, you can do so. Uh, that money is honestly going to go towards legal fees uh, because I have a ton of those coming up. Um, I'm in school now, but once I bounce out of school, I'm going to have legal fees coming out the fucking ass. Coming out the fucking holster, I mean. <laughs> I'm going to have legal fees in the magazine and in need of chambering. So you can shoot us a dollar, shoot us 500, what have you, uh, directly to us on PayPal. Dot, what is it? PayPal.me slash corporate cowboys. Also, um, also Venmo, I believe. And yes, these, these are being ran personally by me. And uh, the money is going towards, like I said, legal fees and subscriptions that I will have to be paying in order to be able to access, be privy to... Uh, to materials and information to operate as a more efficient corporate cowboy. Rest assured, when that point comes, I'm, I mean, I'm going to disclose it, but until now, uh, I have to be selective with the information I do disclose, the words I use, um, even, you know, even I, as far as like my identity goes, that might be pretty discoverable, but beyond that, uh, what I have my hands in right now has to remain behind my back in order to be more effective. You want to cash app me? You can do that at uh, Corporate Cowboys, you know, dollar sign Corporate Cowboys for a cash app and also Venmo. Uh, we, you can find us on Venmo and you can shoot us monies to use. And that's going to go, I mean, again, it goes to, to the personal, it goes to personal use uh, to cover expenses, but also that is distributed amongst uh, associates when required in order to indemnify or expend, um, reimburse them. On Venmo, that's at Alex underscore Coco. Again, Venmo is at Alex underscore Coco. That's Corporate Cowboys, Coco. Cash app is dollar sign Corporate Cowboys. PayPal.me slash Corporate Cowboys. Otherwise, you can subscribe uh, for a monthly uh, through Patreon we're looking to uh, maybe create a telegram. But so far, this platform is serving us well, uh, this podcast. And again, we're most active on Instagram. Any content that gets sent my way, ideas that get sent my way. I'm also the one who uh, will personally edit and create the posts in order for, uh, in order, in order for our audience to enjoy in order for the audience to enjoy and in, in order for you to enjoy <laughs> <laughs> but yo you have any questions comments you can contact us uh, rest assured it will be answered in time drinking water but yeah that's how your boy laughed all the way to the bank, had his cake and ate it too. Yeah, I'm, I didn't get the job. Like I said, I did not get the job through Wells Fargo. Um, I don't know if I'd gotten to that. No, I, I didn't get to that point yet. So after the interviewer had uh, noted down because yeah, they were taken aback and, and, and they were surprised by my answer. You could tell uh, that they were trying to keep 
a poker face, but I mean, they failed only because at this point I had known what to look for in social interaction, the verbal and nonverbal cues that people give off through their voice, through their the intonation of it, through the intonation, through the intonation of it, their body language. And yeah, I knew I threw for I, I knew I threw a fucking curveball and I wasn't ashamed of it. I saw that they took some notes and at the time I thought that they were surprised but in a positive light. They were impressed maybe. It wasn't until later on uh, maybe a week, I believe, a week and a half. Uh, something like a week or a week and a half. I called back to follow up as you want to with the jobs that you are genuinely interested in and uh, that you think you have some prospect of getting. I called to follow up and ask how the status or what the status of my application was, how the process for for finding a, a viable candidate was coming along, and whether or not any additional information was required of me, whether or not they needed something else from me in order to move my shit up on the list, uh, and and you know be a stronger candidate. No, they <laughs> they were really nice about it. Again, I, I might use curse words, but in no way am I deme- am I trying to demean them. Uh, I. I do that again because this this whole this whole fucking podcast is just a form of catharsis. It's a form to vent, right? And I'm doing so in a professional manner. If you haven't worked with professionals who cuss, fucking get used to it now because you might not know me, but when it comes time to work with me, you're gonna fucking know what I'm about. They were very nice to me. Oh, this was over the phone. This was, you know, no longer through email or correspondence, what have you. I called and I asked uh, what the situation was, you know, to get to get my mind right in case I had to ditch the pursuit or uh, or renew my efforts, you know, increase my efforts in order to in order to get considered. And I called and they said that unfortunately no, that they had moved on to other candidates. And when I asked uh, what I could have done to increase my chances, or if there was, if there was some, if there was somewhere that I, if there was something my application lacked, on which, uh, if there was something my application lacked that I could work on for future interviews, <laughs> they brought up the interview note. The note that the interviewer left apparently was submitted and entered into their database for, uh, yeah, for interviewers. When interviews come up and when applications roll in, a profile is created for you and uh, information is then logged in, it's entered and it's, it's kept on your profile, it's attached to your profile. So when I uh, called to ask, they said that the reason that there was no follow-up interview with me, there, there, there were, they didn't consider me any further. They didn't pursue me as a, a potential hire was because I had said, quote unquote, this job would be a piece of cake. <laughs> and yeah, it sounds, it sounds serious how I'm saying it now because I'm, I'm being serious about it. But even over the phone, I mean, over the phone, I could imagine my younger self and and I'm what going I'm about I'm going on what 30 now almost 30 young Alex must have been distraught like oh what the fuck a piece of cake buried me <laughs> but now looking back at that you could tell that the interviewer got into their feelings by the questions that I posed, by the information that I sought on how I was evaluating them. That's what it came down to. And um, I, I, gotta, I gotta hand it to them. They handled it, they handled it as professionally as they could. As they could, right? Because uh, these questions didn't just roll off of them. They weren't as enthusiastic about the bank as um, as I might have been in their position. Maybe they weren't as hungry. Maybe they recognized 
uh, the hunger that they had, that they might have had when they first started and that fizzled out now that they're interviewing candidates, that they're, they might be in a position of power where, where they can look down on candidates and determine the fate of their application. There's a million perspectives to consider, and I'm not going to go through every single one of them. All I know for sure is my own. Everything else is, um, everything else is, um, what is it? Inference. Everything else is inference. Everything else is circumstantial. Everything else is, is just personal inference. And, and even then, it, I could be mistaken. It could all be conjecture. Uh, maybe I just wasn't. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking about it now. Maybe I wasn't professional enough. Like I said, I have the cleanest record now, but I did. I didn't always have the cleanest record. And shit, maybe they found something. <laughs> they found something that <laughs> that they didn't expect either, from such a professional-looking young person. Um. In the end, I'm. I. I mean, I'm. I'm happier for it. In the end, I'm happy now. In the end, what matters is that you are able to wake up that I'm able to wake up in order to tell you that you ought to be happy when you wake up that you ought to wake up like you're going to die <laughs> like I said I already got fucking back pain I already got fucking knee pain like I'm not that old but I've done some shit that has had effects on me so yeah, I got the I got it happening, right? But I still get up like I'm gonna fucking die. <laughs> Cause it's do or die when you're a corporate cowboy. When you have a job, when you have work to do, that isn't only for yourself. It is do or die. It's one or the other. I mean, it might be better said that it's do or kill, because I mean nobody just wants to sit still and fucking die. You wanna go out banging. But, you know, when you don't manage to get the kill, you end up on the receiving end. (laughs) But that's a part of life. And that's part of life few appreciate. But I happen to be one who does. Taking it all in stride. In today's day and age, there is plenty of opportunity. Plenty of opportunity. The bank that I applied for a job at was only one of countless opportunities. If you have a job already, if you are inside of an organization that has a structure, has a perceivable hierarchy, you you have your path already marked out for you. You have your path marked out for you, at least within the organization. How high you want to climb rests solely on what your ambition looks like. Rest solely on how dirty you want to get your hands. Rest on how solely, rest on, rest solely, rests solely on how active you want to be. It rests on whether or not you believe you can be a corporate cowboy and whether or not you are a corporate cowboy. Because yeah, any any organization, any organization is a is a prospect. Any organization is a prospect. As a corporate cowboy, an organization is just an organization. From a sole proprietorship to an LLC to a publicly traded corporation to a nonprofit, they're just organizations. They're just groups of people and individuals. All of them in their own little world and in a shared world with, you know, the organization. Within their organization, they've all got their little mission statement. They've all got their little bylaws and rules for governance and how operations will go to day by day. All of that dictating interactions amongst themselves, between one another, and between other organizations. Lots of opportunity as a corporate cowboy to rise up and to rise up. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> that was the wrong, wrong choice of words. It sounds, 
sounds too populist. I'm not that. I'm not that much of a populist guy. And there is plenty of opportunity to take advantage of, to maximize, to advance in, to become better. I don't know if I said that yet. Forget making America great again. That implies that it's lost its luster, that it's lost the notion that that it no longer embodies the notion of the land of opportunity, that it no longer validates, that it, it no longer represents the land of opportunity. Dude, the opportunity is everywhere. And it's not just here anymore. It's not just in the United States anymore. It's international. Corporate is international. <laughs> Why are you stuck at home? Why are you stuck at home? Why are you setting your sights on only being the CEO? Fuck being the CEO. The CEO is landlocked. <laughs> Be a corporate cowboy within your organization and outside of it. It pays better. For one, the experience. Oh, what you thought I meant. Money, monetarily. No, it, it, pays, it pays a lot better. It, it can be monetarily. It could pay better. But in terms of the experience you get from it, the, the rich, what is it? The rich, yeah, the rich experience. It's an enriching experience. That's, that's all of life, pretty much. Life is an enriching experience. When you wake up every day like you're going to fucking die. <laughs> when, when you wake up like you're gonna be late to clock in <laughs> when, <laughs> when you wake up like you're running late to clock in imagine that you can get so much done I'm getting a lot done right now just airing it out just putting it out there for those who want to listen and for those who don't because the world keeps turning with or without you. The world keeps moving. The world does it moving with or without you. Yeah, and there are days that I don't want to keep moving with the world. Some days, I won't lie. Some days I do wish I could settle down and take it easy. But I know if I settle down and take it easy... I'm just going to get overtaken. I'm going to get X'd out. And that just gets me more mad. <laughs> it gets me more mad for the people who who uh for the people who who do choose to settle. There's nothing wrong with settling, right? But then they I don't know if they forget or they write off or they discount with the feeling of hunger what what hunger feels like oh no like they just write it off like the shit doesn't exist anymore like they've reached uh, a peak in their life where they have chosen to plateau and just coast settle right for lack of a better word where they've chosen to settle at and they might be in an organization just fucking with the with ranks full of killers below them just subordinates who are corporate cowboys each and every one of them you think you think we give a fuck if you've chosen to settle <laughs> you, you think you're gonna be the the last one in your spot is that it <laughs> and then what's what's worse are the folks who do settle and then work to not advance so so they they labor they toil in order to not advance, in order to not, in, in order for others, they toil so that others don't become better or so others aren't promoted to their position. They want their subordinates to be subordinates forever. They want subordinates to be subordinates forever. And what, you think that shit just flies? You think that shit just happens? You think people just... Retire having subordinates forever. 
Ah, it's a crazy world, man. Corporate. And it's fun, too. It really is. When you really... When you really get excited about the work and you really take a moment to appreciate the opportunities that life has for you, especially when you've been blessed with resources. If you haven't been blessed with resources, then yeah, I I fucking feel for you. My heart goes out to you. If you weren't raised in a stable household with a with a with an integral family unit mother and a father, you know, for some solid upbringing and and um hold on, for some solid upbringing and uh I was going to say wholesome. Yes, for some wholesome childhood or growing experiences. Uh yeah, yo, that shit is fucking hard. That shit is difficult. Granted, I mean, it's still all about personal choice. It still definitely is about personal choice because in corporate, you meet folks from all walks of life. You meet folks who were born with silver spoons in their mouth. You meet folks that were born uh, crack babies with a fucking pipe in their mom's mouth. Um, you meet folks who who were born with, it seems like they were born with this innate gift to code and use technology to piece it apart and reverse engineer it. Uh, you were born with other folks who seemingly are fearless, have no fear, uh, are not, who are not, uh, what is it? Squeamish. Don't get queasy at the sight of blood. And um, those are all... Those are all marvelous people, and not all of them came from the most stable, stable pasts. So they all have they all have some past. What matters is the personal choice to be better, to be better. And I'm not saying to be the best. Again, I'm premising this on not wanting to be the best. It's just to be better and make those around you better as well. Because when you're the best, when you're the best, you necessarily have to put others down. You have to win. You have to be, you have to be the best. And then when you reach the top, you have a target on your back. Like that's your reward pretty much is a fucking target on your back. Somebody else must knock you off in order to be king of the hill. But if your goal is just to be better constantly to improve there's no need to be the best there's no need to be the best you are in no rush you're working at a productive pace it's your pace you're working at a productive pace you're working to improve relations both personal and professional both (laughs) personal and professional in order to improve uh, business to have better business opportunities come from it in order to improve life conditions in order to and this is coming back to the theme of the podcast of this episode and it's winding down so I'll close out in order to improve yourself lastly and that's what I'm doing with this one granted I, with the other hours of my days and my weeks I'm doing shit on the side things I'm doing I'm doing things on the side not just shit right because I'm trying to improve my modes for speaking to make it slightly more professional of a higher intellect of a different caliber if you will and uh this podcast I hope serves to enrich those who listen to it. I probably will never go back and listen to an episode after this because I know if I if I've come, I don't know, this far or if I'm down the road uh 20 or 30 more episodes and I were to listen to one of my earlier pieces, I would say wow, what a hunk of shit. <laughs> Only because where I was not comfortable, I am comfortable now. And I'm constantly learning to get comfortable 
with being uncomfortable. It's just getting out of my shell again. It's growing and developing, cultivating that social skill to not get bogged down in my thoughts, to not get bogged down when I speak, to be able to, uh, to be able to um, pull myself out of sticky situations, to be able to appreciate the rock and the hard place and let you know what it feels like to be in such a position. And I know we're all going through it. Everyone has their own struggle personally. Even the the poorest of the poor, the richest of the rich, the 99%, the 1%, they've all got their own struggle. They have all got them. There isn't a person who doesn't struggle. It doesn't matter how rich you are. What matters is that you're working to become better. Though, I think I've mentioned this before, it is harder when you have so much you don't know what to do with. And again, if you need help, if, if you... <laughs> about, to just, about to just hustle real quick. If you need help figuring out what to do with your resources, hit me up. Instagram, Patreon, PayPal, Venmo, Cash App. <laughs> Shoot me a dollar. Place your bet. Place your bets, man. So heading into the weekend, because it is Thursday, heading into the weekend, take it in stride. Take it in stride. Think of it like a Monday. (laughs) Think of it. Think of it. Like any other Monday. (laughs) Because the work is always there. The work will always be there. You will not always be there. You, I mean, you're you're there so long as you want to be. You're here so long as you want to be, right? And obviously you can't prepare for the unexpected. You can't fully prepare for the unexpected. I mean, shit, when it's your time, it's your time. I've seen that. I've seen that movie. <laughs> when it's your time, it's your time. The best you can do is to prepare, is to work for yourself, is to work to improve yourself, to better yourself. The situation you're in, your corner of the world, your your corner of life. Improve it, and you can do that. You can do that starting with yourself, in your organization. Depending, uh, depending your situation, what your circumstances are, what the hierarchy looks like, what the work dynamic looks like between management and employee. Or if you're an independent contractor, even if you're an independent contractor, there's ways to improve yourself. Contractors are, are thought to only you know, work to the letter. Stop saying, you know. Contractors are typically known for working to the letter. So they are a little more particular than even some unions are. Some, than even some uh, tough, not tough, but boisterous, rambunctious, not rambunctious, what's the word? Just unions who like to cause problems, like to cause problems with management. And yeah, they might do it in in representing the union members. But there's a way to move professionally in order to cultivate better relationships in any organization you're in by working together, by working with people, not always falling Pray to the concept that, oh, you must work for blank. You must work under blank. <laughs> oh, no, that, that dynamic, maybe it's something I've had since I was younger. Maybe I, I, I had issues with authority or I wanted to be the authority figure or I just wanted to know what it looked like, what it felt like. I wanted to know why people in authority weren't the greatest leaders People, I want to know why people in authority even have the authority. Well, who the fuck do they think they are? Where do they get it from? <laughs> what? Power. What the fuck is power? 
Ah, jeez. I think that's gonna... I think that's gonna wrap this episode up. In the future, I'll be sure to... um, To continue being better. To continue improving. I can tell already that from my first episode to now, I'm on like what, episode 10 or something. 10 or 11, 12. I can already tell that I've improved in some respect. And uh, every episode will be different, I hope. I really don't like repeating myself. I know that there are recurring themes and there might be themes that I reiterate and hopefully build more on. Build, not moron, don't say moron either. Again, th- that that sentence right there, moron, is uh, to build moron. To continue building on. There you go, you see? Because I got to change that sentence around. In linguistics and in verbal speech, that is a red flag that I know will trip some people up. Uh, it'll divert their attention. It'll, di- it'll literally distract them. I mean, I've been in conversation with somebody where you're in the middle of a sentence and there is an unintended double entendre or like an un- unintended double speak or like an un- unintended, unintended innuendo and their eyes dart to like one side of the room or, I don't know, dart into the back of their fucking head because they're thinking of something. Um they're thinking of something funny or they're thinking of, of a response or something witty. And that's a fucking distraction. Why? Because you've unintentionally divided their attention. So yeah, I get that we're supposed to <clears throat> give our undivided attention to some people, but some people do bring it on the, onto themselves in order to distract others and they might do so unintentionally. Thus, undermining the very objective of a conversation, which, like I said, it's like cracking a safe and getting into the bank. (laughs) That's a whole other podcast. That's a whole other episode. Have a great weekend.